What is up, everyone? Hey, James Hurst here today with Josh Knox. Uh, we're actually both out of Utah. We met in person twice now, I think. Yep. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about his payment solution, his alternate payment solution. I am like a fan of his because Stripe shut me down on high level without, without any warning. Uh, and then I went through their appeals process. And guess what? They did not get back to me. I was left high and dry. I was mad. I hadn't done anything wrong that, that I know of, right? No chargebacks, no complaints, no what I don't know, all you know, no high refund rates, any of those things that you might think like what triggered, why would they shut me down? Uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, I ended up having an old Stripe account uh, because high level is like very integrated with Stripe, right? And so for, for me personally, um, I ended up just, I was able to flip over to an, an, an existing Stripe account and that's what I'm using today. But I want people to know and be aware of Josh and his solution with Numeric and, and see if, it, if, if it's a good fit for them. Um, and kind of what sparked us meeting again was Stripe had the, you know, that was so tone deaf. They actually sent me a review. They said, hey, come, come review us on Trustpilot. And I just wanted to like rip into them. And so um, I know, Josh, you, you're working closely with high levels systems and you're, you use high level yourself. Correct. Yep. So um, yeah, maybe I'll just let you kind of take it away and, and, and share with my community, uh, you know, what it is that you do and offer and, and maybe teach us something and, and tell us, you know, how to get in touch with you if, you know, if we need to find out more information. Okay, great. Well, first off, thanks, thanks for having me on. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, met you, met you in Utah a couple months ago and then saw connected again it's in Dallas, conference. right? At the the level up yeah. event, which was great. Um, so yeah, let, maybe let's start from, and I'll address, you know, everything you talked about with Stripe and, and what I want to say first is like Stripe's a good product, right? Like they obviously know what they're doing in a lot of regards, but they're not for everybody. And so we, we find ourselves, you know, running into these problems in the community that we're in. And it's not just our community, um, it's other communities. So yeah. with that being said, um, you know, let's talk about just the baseline of payments, right? Payments is, right, everybody is familiar. It's just the movement of money. But that movement of money is regulated. It's highly regulated. Uh, there are banks involved, there are processors involved, there's software involved, there's gateways involved, blah, 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 right? The list right. goes on and on about the complexity of the, of the payment space. And so what, you know, what most people don't know about payments is it's based on risk. Most times you don't know what the risk is. Nobody tells you what that risk is. So Stripe comes and goes, hey, you're too risky. We got we to gotta part ways. Sorry about that, right? Yeah. And then, of course, ask you for a review to which you're like, I totally agree. I would have ripped it into them too. <laughs> and so, um, you know, if you don't understand the way the payment industry works, that's totally fine. But at least from a risk standpoint, you know, what happens? So in payments, and I'm just going to get a little bit uh, complex here with the payments industry and then bring it back around to the solution and, okay. and why, you know, I do what I do. Payments are about risk. It's about the transfer of money. When, uh, when you look at it from a standpoint of a merchant account, which is what Stripe or a bank is extending to you, they're extending you a line of credit. And that line of credit carries with it risk. So if, if Amex comes to you or, or Bank of America says, we'd love to give you our Visa card, they're extending you a line of credit to use the credit card, right? You go out, you make purchases, go on trips, what have you. Mm -hmm. That line of credit that's been extended, you have to repay it, right? There's risk on that end. What if you don't repay? Then who's left responsible to pay the merchant that you said you'd give money to? The same thing happens on the merchant side. If you take $10,000 in payments instead of charging $10,000 in charges and all of a sudden you disappear or you can't fulfill on your orders, then that $10,000 has to be accounted for, right? So that's the, the line of credit on the merchant side versus the line of credit on the consumer side, right? And so what a lot of people don't get is when that line of credit is extended, the risk that's involved to extend that comes at a cost, right? That's the rate that everybody pays, right? So what Stripe and PayPal and Square have tried to do over the years is, is sort of streamline that, if you will. And they, they, they are what's called a payment facilitator or a payfac in the payment industry. And they give you a sub-account of their main account. They then absorb that risk. They say, 
we're willing to give you an account. Just give us these five different points of information, you know, your name, your driver's license, yeah. and where do you want us to deposit the money? And they've made it so simple to get an account and take money and then not let people know how it actually works. Right. Yeah. And so what I tell people is Stripe is the American idol of payments, Square, PayPal, it's all the same. They want everybody to come through the door and use their service. And then they'll sift through them at the end and go, oh, this looks good for us. That doesn't look good for us. Yeah. So, and I hope my client doesn't mind. Um, he's fantastic, but he's dubbed it the Stripe slap, right? Mm. When Stripe yeah. comes at you and says, hey, we, yeah. we can't do business anymore. How would, you, how would you explain the fact that one of my accounts, they shut down and then the other one, they're letting me do the, it's the same business, you know? <laughs> Is it, so, their, is it their incompetence? Is it their automated systems that didn't flag it? Like, was it yeah. an automated system that flagged it in the first place? It's a, that's a great question. And I'm, because this is the marketer's podcast, I, listen, this is not scarcity marketing. This is not, you know, you better get it today or else. This is the hard, these are the hard facts. Their AI hasn't caught up to you yet. When they do, it'll likely happen again because if you're still selling the same product that you got shut down on before, it will likely happen again. Um, so I, I, my guess would be their AI just hasn't caught up to it yet. What do right? you, I mean, so here we are in the high level group. There's, there's thousands, you know, 20, tens of thousands. Yeah. Yeah. Like we're the a SaaS revenue model, you know, is kind of not like a shady thing. You know, it's, it's recurring. It's, you know, happy customers, is, sure. I would think that the risk profile seems pretty low, but what do you think they're seeing? What What do you think that is being flagged? I, did Did someone say that if you're not processing enough volume, that that's a problem too? Like if you're a small guy getting started started out, or so like, actually no, that that's that's actually not the case. So okay. uh, you know, um, let me answer this in in a couple of parts, and I'll start with the last question first. It's actually better to use Stripe in the beginning because of the low friction point to get yeah. an account and get up and get your business going. The more you grow, though, the more you would look at a solution like myself because we're built to help you grow. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll talk about the details of why that's important later. But, um, you know, Stripe, PayPal, Square, they're great for the small consumer. And that's actually what they're really gear geared for. Now, the risk profile, because that's a great question. Mm -hmm. We live in a world with the high level software, uh, with marketing agencies where it's considered future deliverable products. Okay. So even though it is a monthly recurring product, you're still delivering that out to a degree in the future. Okay. So let me give you an example. Now, I don't think this would happen, right? But if you're providing SaaS to somebody, what happens if the high level servers go down and you can't provide that SaaS anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Now that future product that you were trying to deliver every day, every month, every year, then um, you can't deliver it. Now you've got a real challenge, right? That's the kind of risk assessment that processors go through. That's what they're trying to figure out. Now, obviously, high level is a fantastic organization, well run. The yeah. likelihood of it ever going down is probably nil. Yeah. But it, the assessment still has to happen on that future delivery. Make sense? Yeah. Is there, is, is Stripe so big that, that they wouldn't take a call from Sean and them and say, Hey, listen, you guys have got to update your, your algorithm, your risk profile for our, for anybody under our umbrella, you know, and you know, say, Hey, listen, you need to turn a blind eye and not to say that there couldn't be any bad actors that end up getting on high level, sure. but you know, it's kind of, kind of like bringing the collective power of the 20,000 agencies and saying, you know, yeah, it's hey, it's a great question. I, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I, I don't yeah. I don't know what they would say. Like I said before, I do think Stripe's a good product. It's just not yeah. for everybody. Um, and, and the other part of it that we haven't mentioned yet that the payment industry knows about that most people who use the Stripe product don't know about is they'll assess you as high risk if you're just not profitable for them either, because that is high risk just to their business model, right? So yeah. let me give you an example. Yeah, yeah. Every card brand, Visa, MasterCard, Amex, Discover, has hundreds of different card types under that brand name, right? So you can think of them as a vertical product. Every one of those cards has a different price point, right? An Amex black card that you have to spend $250,000 on annually to keep has a different price point when it's swiped or, 
right? Okay. Used for payment than your local credit union visa does. Okay. So like the, you're talking about the fees, the fees, like that's the, correct. The, the, right. The 2. So 2.9% is... plus the correct transaction charge or whatever. Yeah. And that's, that's actually part of what's called interchange. So there's an interchange rate that Visa and MasterCard, they all control that, right? It's their sandbox and everybody's playing in it. Um, so they control that interchange rate. Amex is always the highest, just the way it is. Uh, Visa, MasterCard, um, you know, they have an interchange rate that, that hovers between 1.81, 1.8 and higher. By the way, Visa, MasterCard, Amex, Discover the Card Brands, in the lifetime of them being a business and operating interchange have never lowered their fees. They've always gone up and it goes up biannually, by the way. Okay. Um, so with that said, if somebody spent money with you at an Amex black card, right? Let's say you did $10,000 a month in sales and 55, 60% of them were the Amex black card. Well, that card's going to process it around 4%, not 2.9%. So then you become not profitable as a merchant to Stripe. Does that make sense? It's like if you were to buy milk at $4 a gallon, yeah. try and resell it at three fifty, dollars and nobody, right? So I, I would think that the higher the percentage is, is the more that they're making. No, it's actually like, less, right? Because that's they're their, only charging that's their cost. you. Yeah. So, so they're charging you 2.9% to use their service, but the Amex oh. black card might cost 4% oh, okay. to process. Does that make okay. sense? So well, in that- why, why can't they just- match what you know if it's a that charge and then you, then you get that uh you get the matching fees so the then you cards. would pay more right you wouldn't pay 2.9 percent you'd pay four percent but they just give you a blanket uh they right. just give you a blanket rate across all cards but internally correct. they know that you're expensive correct. expensive to them that's correct yeah you, you there's a there's a payment blend profile that you you would develop over time right yeah and so if your payment blend profile starts creeping up in cost then you become a high risk business to them and the same is true for you and i right if uh, we, in fact we were having a little bit of this conversation before we started the recording if somebody comes to you and it just costs you more money to solve their problem at some point it's not profitable for you to continue to do that right we don't want to end the relationship but we're in business yeah and so we've got to make an adjustment there right yeah. So that that's how it that's how it works, and that's why you tend to see. So in your case, you never had a problem. You didn't have a chargeback. You didn't right. have a high refund rate. Nothing was going on. Right. So you could have either been deemed high risk just as a business. We're we're just not comfortable with the James Hurst business model. Not that you're doing anything wrong. It's just our yeah. risk profile. Yeah. Uh, doesn't fit what we want to do. Um, they could have said that, or they could have said, you know what? We had too many Amex cards come in and it just got too expensive for us. Yeah. It could have been, it could have been one of two. Or it could have been both. Oh, man. Just how, it's just how it's how payments work. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. um, so anyways, yeah, I mean, pay, payments is a complex business. Um, and they've, you know, the companies that are out there, the payment facilitators have done their best to sort of streamline by creating that flat line percentage. When in reality, that's actually not how the business works. But the business model they set up was come one, come all, and then we'll filter on the back end. And, and, and in fact, there was just an article today about Stripe. Uh, they're laying off 14% of their workforce because oh, right. they just don't have the revenue coming in. Wow. That they thought was coming in. So, wow. Um, and that happens to businesses, right? That's not, that's yeah. neither here nor there. But, you know, when, when, you're talking about payments. There's a lot of variables that go into how it all works. Huh. Yeah. So ho yeah. hopefully that made all sense. I, I hope we didn't lose your audience. It's a, it's uh, <laughs> a complex process. They really are. Cool. Well, let's, let's hear what you got. Let's hear what your solution is then to, or the alternative, right? Yeah. Perfect. So, so with all that being said, right. That, businesses want to grow. That's what that's, you know, we, we've got a product as a business owner, we want to sell something, we offer value to the community that wants to buy from us. And to facilitate all of that payments is sort of the fuel for your business, right? So payments have to come through the door. Now, we've built a product into high level that that's totally integrated, that replaces Stripe, uh, are one of the biggest, you know, value adds that we bring is that we drop costs 50 to 90% for the, for the users in our group. 
And that becomes really powerful because those are real dollars in your bank account at the end of every month, right? Those are real savings. And I'll share with you some, some statements of some customers that, that are with us right now. Um, but the solution that we built, and I'm going to share my screen. Yeah, please. Um, it, it is meant to fill that gap. It's meant to fill that gap where people have either been shut down or, or don't want the high fees anymore, right? And realize uh, there's something to be had here in terms of savings. And then the other side of that is the way we've built our model, which is uh, uh, some of it is on the, the legacy payment system that's existed for decades, is to help your business scale, right? So one of the big challenges with a payment facilitator is, let's say you have, um, you have a steady climb in sales. You go 10,000, 15,000. And then let's say you, you, you realize that your proof of concept is working, your customers are happy, and then you go with a big launch, right? You okay. run a bunch of ads, and then that launch skyrockets your sales. That becomes risky for a payment processor as well, especially one that's a payment facilitator that's using a lot of AI to monitor what's going on. Whereas with a legacy system that we're tied into, we can work with that business and, and go back to our risk team and go, hey, look, there's a launch coming up. Here's the price points. It's very similar to what they're doing now, but we think we're going to see a spike in, scale, uh, spike in sales. And therefore, we're aware of it before it happens, right? Okay. If, even if we're not aware of it before it happens, we've got mitigation strategies in place that go back to the merchant. Hey, looks like you had a bunch of sales coming. Can you just kind of tell us what's going on? And they have that one-on-one -on -one connection with me, with our processing partners, and therefore we can help that business scale and just continue to grow, right? Okay. Um, so with that being said, you know, this is what's on your screen now uh -huh. is our software. It's built into high level. As you can see, it comes off the left menu item over here. Um, you create all of your products, all your payment forms in here. We've got a whole couponing system, taxes. You can monitor all of your purchases, your subscriptions. Um, we've got a whole invoicing system that's got a lot of features. Uh, we also have quotes, um, so you can send quotes out. So, you know, the service industry, this is very popular with. Um, but overall, our system, fully integrated. You can automate off of successful purchases, send all your communications through GHL. All of it works in a very similar manner than, uh, than the current payment system, right? Okay. So, what about, like, what about the SaaS configurator, for example? So with the SaaS configurator, we're actually working on our own version of it, but you can still launch a sub account from a purchase in our system right now and automate it. Okay. So that happens in our payment forms. We, we help you work that through the API. Um, okay. so, you, so you do use a zap or a make.com scenario. Yeah. Um, but it's doable, right? A lot of, yeah, you know, it's not I, that, not that big of a deal. No, it's, it's actually fairly uh, simple. Uh, we actually have um, mapped outlines that, that we're happy to share on how to set that up if you've never done it before. So cool. yeah, you, you can do that. You can do that with us. Now, now I have to just ask, so like, the, the, you know, these are huge companies. Like, I, you know, you're Josh Knox, at, you know, out of his house. Like, who are you backed by? Or like, are you just yeah. this awesome coder guy? Like, what is your backing? Or like, are you like licensing something else like like we license high level or what, like tell us about your you know yeah great great question so yeah. yeah you're right i am me i work from home this is my software yeah i'm not the coder i've got a yeah. coding team a development team i've got a, a team that helps with the processing side so to that point um there's a gateway behind this i mentioned in the beginning the way the whole payments industry works is um, there are gateways, there are processors acquiring and sponsor banks, which are one and the same. That's how the, the system works. And it works that way for Stripe and PayPal and Square as well. Now, the gateway that we use is the NMI gateway. It, it was talked about at um, the Level Up Summit. Right, okay. It's a fantastic, fantastic gateway, very user-friendly. Um, we white label that. It's tied into our system. Everything's married in the back end of this. Okay. Um, and all of our clients still get access to that gateway, kind of the same way you would, would with Stripe. Um, that gateway, by the way, does almost 200 billion a year in volume. It's okay. large. It's quite large. Um, and then on the back end of that is the processor that we work with. The processor that we work with mainly is called TSIS. Now, your, your average viewer won't know what that means. But TSIS last year did 24 trillion transactions. Oh, 
ran through their network. So we've built our software to tie into high level. It's where all the magic happens that helps our clients save. But we've tied into these legacy systems that are massive and very, very robust. Very okay. robust. Okay, so you're kind of you're kind of like uh, like how we d leverage you know the backing of high level and their 150 Correct. developers. You're kind of like the front man for you know for these big guys too. Correct. Yep. Okay. Cool. Yep. And it works. It works very well. In fact, it it works so well. Let me let me share just a few success stories that we've got. Right. Okay. So. Ours are monthly success stories. This happens to be from September. I haven't pulled October okay. yet. I've just been busy. But let me let me increase the size. Let's zoom in here so everybody can see this. Okay. Um, so let's just make this a little bit zoomed in. Okay. So this client of ours processed nearly 60,000. Okay? okay. They paid $113.50 to process that volume. They That's paid... Awesome. Right there, 0.19%. Yeah. Wow. Saved $1,600. Yeah. I have right? sent some large Stripe invoices and I can barely stomach it anymore because it's, uh, you know, if I'm yeah. doing a $4,000 funnel build, that they're, that's going to be, a, I don't know, two or $300 fee. Yep. And, yep. and you're, you're processing 60000 for 100 bucks. That Yeah, that that's about. just for one. That's just for one client. Let, let's take a look at another one because... Okay. You know, not everybody's the same, right? It's sort of like weight loss. All, all results are different. Okay. Okay. Well, let's yeah, let's look at it. another one here. This is a client with a little bit lower volume. Yeah. Okay. Love, a little over 11,000 paid $132. They paid just a little over 1%. Huh. That's still a third less, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now here's another one. These, these are all from September, by the way. Yeah. So this okay. client. Okay. Almost 89,000. Paid eighty six dollars point zero nine seven percent. So the, these savings are real. This is their merchant statement that they get mailed to them. Actually, they okay. get it emailed to them, okay. right? And then this is the the software part of the deal that we that we've set up, including the gateway. Okay, yeah. so there there's your real costs that are happening right now. So this this particular um, client saved almost twenty five hundred dollars in fees. That's amazing. By the way, this is his. I think this is his third month of processing. We're going into his fourth month of processing. He's been fairly consistent at this volume. So his savings now are getting close to 10 grand total. Yeah, I bet he's loving the last couple of months. Uh, do, do you have anything? I know I, I know there's a lot of people in the, in the other countries, the international community. Yep. Uh, do, do, you, do you have anything for them? The people that, you know, they can't use Stripe in their country, the people that they just, does this work for them too? So the technology actually does. Our technology tied into high level will work. The mm -hmm. gateway will work. What we're currently in process of negotiating is the processing side. So I've made some contacts in the UK, South Africa, and Australia. And we're just right now working on those relationships to connect okay. those processors into our system. So okay. again, our software gateway processor. Uh, these two pieces we already have, are, well, three pieces for the U.S. and Canada we can do. Globally, we're just working on that processing piece. And I should note, globally, it's going to be a little bit different, right? Because globally, uh, this is going to really infuriate our U.S. citizens. The payment processing is the most expensive in the U.S. globally. Yeah, okay. just the way it is, right? We're capitalists here. And so if you get outside of the United States, processing rates outside of the US, you can often find under 1%. It's, it's more regulated. It's more of a sort of a commodity more than anything. Um, but our technology will absolutely work globally. Okay, very cool. So we're working on it. We, we're hoping so, for a Q1 launch. Is there somewhere in here where I would like give you my bank routing information where you're gonna like deposit the money that you know gets processed through the funnels into my bank account? Yep, that, that will all happen on the processing side. So when you come to us, that's a great question. When you So let's start from the Stripe angle again. When you go to Stripe, you give them an email, you give them a name, yeah. you give them just a few pieces of information, some of it's your bank info. Yeah. They're starting the underwriting process when that happens, right? And then they'll start asking more questions the more you grow. Um we do all that up front. We just ask yeah. for all of that information up front. We want to know about your business, about you personally, what capital you have, what your business sells. So when you go through that process, you give us that bank account information so the funds can be automatically deposited as soon cool. as they clear. Yep. 
Cool, cool. So, and and I've been getting so the right the post that went on for the last couple of days. Yeah, do you want to you want to share that post like where Xander was like you want to go to the Facebook group and kind of the, yeah the, let me the genesis of... um, let me stop the share real quick and let me go find that because yeah it got kind of nutty didn't it um yeah. I, let's yeah. see no uh, this is here it is oh it is already up okay here we go yeah so th- this is the question that got happened or that. the question that got happened this is the question that got asked <laughs> um xander asked the question and then Thankfully, you, James, mentioned my name here. And then this just kind of went crazy. 172. 172 people. That's why we're here today. We said, yeah. I was just like, okay, like this is obviously, uh, you know, a, a big important thing for people in the community. Let's let's get Josh on, on a call here and yep. let him kind of explain it once, right? Rather than. Yeah. And then it just, you know, it, it spirals from there because a lot of people have the same concerns, um, which are yeah. legitimate concerns, right? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, you can see it just keeps going and going. And then I'm not going to show you my messenger, but <laughs> the messenger just kind of uh, gets overwhelming. Um, so anyways, yeah, that's, you know, that's what tends to happen is, um, you know, a question gets asked where it's a hot button hair on fire issue for somebody. And uh, we can, thankfully, we can jump in and help. Awesome. Yeah, that's why we're here because of because it happened to me, happened to yep. him. It could happen to you. What are you going to do, you know, to mitigate that? Uh, I, I kind of feel like I know I know they are coming out with more payment options and, you know, in the in the future. Right. They're, that's something they want to do. But uh, so, yeah, that, you know, you bring up a good point. So high level is great. Right. We all we all know how great they are. And they they listen to the community as well. So they're going to they're going to be coming out with some different gateways. Something that the community should know is even when you have a, a new gateway integrated, you're still going to need a merchant account. That's what one of the big things that we help our clients with is get that merchant account. We've got great connections, four different partners that can do incredibly, incredibly high risk businesses to incredibly moderate and low risk businesses. Like I've got barber shops, I've got plumbers, uh, you know, I've got agencies. I also have people that sell regulated substances um, you know, regulated by the government. And so we built those relationships over time and we've got, you know, fantastic, we got like a 99.9% approval rate for our clients. Okay. So even with the gateway integration into high level, which is a fantastic new feature coming they're they're still going to need a merchant account. So if you wanted to go out and, and use NMI in high level, then you would need, you would still need to have a merchant account. And, and, and they, they could come have. to you for that or would they go through Absolutely. high level or something? Okay. Yep, absolutely. Um, and uh, yeah, it's 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 fairly straightforward. Application, submit supporting documents. My team guides you through the process, gets you approved, and then we get you onboarded. Okay. So pretty pretty uh, pretty straight streamlined. Okay, I remember last time we talked in person, there was some little thing with, you know, cash versus checks and and the and the gas station. Yeah. Is that worth, is that worth talking about? Yeah, let's like, talk about it. So that's, okay. that's the power of what we do. Right. So here, here's a sample form for us. Right. Okay. By the way, the, this is truly built all, all in high level integrated. This is a high level form, mm-hmm. which means you can actually, you know, design the heck out of this sucker. Right. You've seen some, I can see, forms. I can see you have already. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we really those have look, gone. Those look like, finally. Those look like the forms I designed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm no designer. That's yeah. for sure. Nobody would ever accuse me of that. Um, but here's a high level form, right? So you can okay. uh, put any field you want in it. Um, we've custom coded yeah. this one, obviously, and it comes through in our snapshot, which is how we, we help our clients. But as you can see right here, we've got a couple of options to pay credit card and check, right? Okay. Now, you can see you've got products with a line item. There's a price for that. You can see the subtotal down here. You can add tax in our system. There's no tax on any of these products, right? And then you enter your payment information. By the way, you can do one and two step order forms. Um, okay. But if somebody were to click over to check, right? That line item cost changes. It's a little bit less, right? Okay. So you and I are familiar and, and most people listening to this, we're familiar with this at the gas pump when we go put gas in our car. There is always a credit card price and always a cash price. Can you, can credit you card flip, price can you is always back, slightly higher. Right? Can you flip back and forth? I wasn't paying attention to the sure. price. So so it's 207 with a credit card, but it's cheaper if you do check. Yep. Okay. So cool. because you give your customer the option different ways to pay, 
Here's what we know behaviorally, and the data shows it. You can charge a little bit higher of a price, which is what our program does for credit card, which means we've now passed the credit card fee onto your customer who chooses to pay with a credit card versus you paying it, right? That's how, that's how we get these crazy results. By okay. the way, this person's average ticket price was $2,700. Okay. They, they, they rolled their old customers at a certain price point into this new model and nobody's complained one bit. Okay. So it works. I mean, now, I mean, could you not just say, I'm going to raise my prices to cover the fees anyways, like regardless? You could. You, you could. Here's the challenge. It becomes circular math. You can never catch it. Right. Uh -huh. So if you say I'm going to up my prices 4%, you are now creating a higher priced product, right? In okay. theory, to cover the price of the credit card. Okay. But how is payment processing the old way, the traditional way assessed? It's assessed on your volume. So if you sell $10,000 a month in volume, then you pay a percentage of that volume in fees, right? If you now raise your price, price is 4% and it's $10,400, you're now paying fees on 10,400, not 10,000, right? Okay. okay. So it becomes circular math. What we've done here is legitimately dynamically change the pricing for a credit card product. And this money comes out and is escrowed on your behalf. Oh. Then we go ahead and pay the bill. Does that make sense? Oh. So that's how it works. So it is a true cutoff. Whatever you used to pay in a rate is now effectively 0%. Now, Let's now because people are going to ask the question. Well, if it's effectively 0%, where do you get 0.97%? The way the law says you can do this and prefers you to do this, by the way, is the way we do it, which is called dual pricing. There are two prices here, right? Uh -huh. That the customer can see. Uh -huh. The law says I can only transfer the credit card rate to the customer, I cannot transfer a per transaction rate. Okay. So, in our pricing, you'll see like that, like that little fixed thing, the little thirty cents plus the plus correct. the percentage. That's correct. You cannot you cannot add on the thirty cents. We we only charge fifteen cents, by the way. Okay. You cannot add the thirty cents. Okay. okay. So that's where you get these these Whoa. additional little costs. But ultimately, you can see that it's a benefit, right? I mean, yeah. the math is the math. Yeah. Cool. So that's how this works. Uh, we we. Our system dynamically, when you create a product in our system, it creates two prices. Oh, nice. Okay. Right? There's a cash price, which is check online. And, the, and the check, is that, like, is that like a routing number? Is that where yep. you enter? Can I see oh, that? Oh, sorry. Let me, let, me, let me click over there. So you yep. click check and it asks for a routing Checking number. Checking your savings. Number. Yeah. It still does the same verifications. Are you the person that owns the account? Right? Okay. So that kind of stuff. Uh, we have terms and conditions hard coded in for for ACH to protect their, our merchants. Um, okay. That's what the the underwriters require of us. So we we pre build all that stuff into our system. Sweet. So yeah, um, and then from there, honestly, it's configuration. Like what what you see here is um, is a tool, right? You you set up this tool however you want, you know, to take payment in your business. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I'm not a designer, but you can totally design the heck out of this form. I've seen some cool forms from my clients. <laughs> cool. Cool. So, so that's, kind of, that's in a way it. we've that's already talked works. about pricing. It's, it's, uh, it's a little, it's a percentage like anything else and it's less than Stripe. And it, I mean, is there, I mean, is there, if I'm coming here from all the cool Stripe integrations, is there anything I'm going to miss? You know, like, like we talked about the SAS configurator. Is there anything where the feature parity? Yeah, right. the, the the one thing today that I'm that I don't have built in is just rebilling for Twilio and, and Mailgun, which is okay. now turning into the lead connector stuff. But okay. Um that will come in our um our SAS configurator. Awesome. And then awesome. what else will come in our SAS configurator is the you know upgrade or downgrade those SAS plans. We'll we've got we'll okay. have that built in there. We actually have a uh, a customer portal as part of this. So if somebody buys, oh, okay. um, they'll get emailed. Hey, here's your portal where you can see your purchases and so forth. And we've got a lot of other functionality built into this um, that you know you would find out once you got using it. That you know they're kind of the bells and whistles of what goes on. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, I think that's a great overview for for anybody that wants to um, you know get in touch with you or watch the demo, another demo. Um, where can they where can they find you? A, a yeah, great, website? great question. You can go to numeric.com. Numeric. I guess I should spell my business name right. So you can go to numeric.com, and then uh, yeah. you can actually calculate what you would save. Um, th that I'm just going to show you that right here, real quick. Numeric.com. Here it is. Savings. This is a little calculator that will tell anybody how much they're going to pay. Uh -huh. um, and this includes all costs. So ACH costs per transaction costs. Uh -huh. um, and so you can kind of just kind of play with this for your own business and see um, what you can expect to pay based upon your average volume and your average sale price. And I see you, I see you have an affiliates tab there. I want you guys to just know I'm actually not an affiliate today or any, any, by any means. And this is totally just, I just want you guys to be aware of, of that this is out there. I'm, I don't have an affiliate link for you. So just go direct to his website, you know, maybe, maybe down the road, uh, you know, um, but we'll see. I don't personally use this. Like, like I said, I switched to my other Stripe account personally. So, um, but yeah, mostly my goal here is to make you guys aware of, of an alternative to Stripe. Um, you know, with someone that I've known from, from Utah here and at, I, I saw him at the event. And so, yeah, if you guys are interested, definitely get in touch with Josh here, visit the website. And, uh, I think it looks, it looks like it's, uh, well on its way to, to being a, a, a great option. Yeah, um, it is. I mean, I know I'm a little bit biased, but our, you know, our customers are happy. They're, they're saving money, a lot of money. Um, and they're doing well with it. Now, let me, you brought up the affiliates. You're, you're correct. You're, you're not an affiliate with us. Um, but the way we built this is you can actually white label this entire offering. Oh, so if you're an agency and you, you sell SaaS or you sell the software in some oh, other fashion to, you to can our actually, clients, to our clients, exactly. Because your clients want to save money as well, right? They're a business. Yeah. They want to, they need payments coming through the door. So that's why I was saying like, I have agency clients who've then referred to referred me to their barber shops, to their plumbers, oh. right, to, to their other service providers who take payments for their businesses. Right. And so what ends up happening is an agency owner can recommend this to their clients and the clients end up saving so much money that it ends up paying for the agency fees. Okay. So it becomes a really nice feature, right? Part of your tech stack or your SaaS offering okay. to be able to say, Hey, we've got a payment solution for you. If you need one, um, we can do in-person payments. We have that entire functionality. And so there's a lot built into this from the agency standpoint. Like I said, you can white label this entire thing, wow. the login screen, what this says here, the whole kit and caboodle, the forms, you know, the application, and then we just support it on the back end. Okay. Um, you know, Sean and, and Robin and Varun have done so well at building high level. It's just a great model to follow. Right. Yeah. So that's what we did. Uh, yeah. We built essentially payments on the high level model of it's a SaaS. Uh, well, white label. So, and we of course pay an affiliate for that as well. So what, one more, t maybe a tougher question. Seems like you have this guy doing 80 grand a month, uh, a month and you make a hundred bucks. He has other guys doing 50 grand a month. You make 110 bucks. Like I don't see a lot of, as how, how are you running a business off of, you know, making a hundred bucks a month on a client? Yeah. So we actually were the same. Um, we're not just making what you saw there. That's actually just what they pay. That's not what, what we make. So payment processing is no different than any oh. other product. You buy it at a wholesale rate and resell it at a retail rate. So okay. it, in the amount that we pass on, in this case, we'll just use this four cents. There is a cost that we have to pay the card brands, right? Visa, MasterCard. We've got to pay the processor. That All that stuff comes out of that four cents. Whatever's left over is revenue for us. Oh. Does that make sense? So you so, have some other you have some other margin in place other than just those fees that you're correct, which allows us to do the affiliate program. Uh huh. Because we want to be good partners, just like High Level's been a great yep. partner for us. So that's why we built it the way we built it. So I still don't. I mean, there's. Uh, I guess there, there's there's mar so the the simplest way to understand this is there's margin in that thirty five cents that somebody. Yeah. Right? Okay. That, that's see. where it comes from, and it I in. See. You, you have to think of payments almost like stocks. It's a portfolio. And the bigger the portfolio that gets, the more dividends that it ultimately can pay. Okay. All right. Well, if anyone 
wants to get in touch with Josh. Now you know how. Uh, leave a comment below thanking Josh for his time and, and putting this putting this out there for us. Uh, if you have any questions, you can put them in the comments. But check out numeric.com and uh, check out these other videos that are going to be showing up at the end screens here. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for tuning in. Yep. Bye. Hope you enjoyed the show. Advice given is for educational purposes only and may not be applicable to your business. You should know that the marketing show receives compensation through its affiliate relationship for the products and services it recommends. Thank you for your support and we hope to see you on the next episode of The Marketing Show.